Hello, welcome to Puffs and Poetry. I'm your host, Jessica, a writer, cannabis aficionado, and poetry lover. I've got my weed, I've got my iced coffee, let's get into it. Today I am rolling my favorite type of joint, a type two joint. Well, I got a two for one special there. A type 2 joint refers to a type 2 chemotype. A chemotype is a classification of cannabis based on the most dominant cannabinoids. A type 2 chemotype has a blend or some sort of a balance of CBD and THC. I love to roll my own type 2 joints using CBD flower and herbal blends like this one from High Priestess Wellness. What I particularly like about this herbal blend is that it already has CBD mixed into it. So often when you buy herbal blends, you will get just that, herbs. But I like that this one comes with the hemp flower already added. If you are like me and want to cut it, you can. Or if you want an incredibly flavorful aromatic joint just with this herbal blend, you can also have that. So the base of my joint is CBD. And then I just add a little sprinkle of THC on top, enough so that I can feel the euphoric, mood boosting, and slightly intoxicating effects, but not so much that I'm so high that I just want to sit on the couch afterwards. It's an individual balance to strike, but finding what works for you will be immensely helpful in creating a cannabis routine that works for you. If you are rolling up with me today, I would love to know what you're smoking, what kind of weed, what kind of cannabinoid blend, what kind of herbs, and also how you're smoking it, whether it's a bowl, a joint like me, a bubbler, a bong, a blunt, a vaporizer. Let me know. I love when I remember my poker so that I can create a nice tight roll. I've only been rolling my own joints for about two years now, so there's still a lot of room for growth. So today, we are going to be reading from a book of poetry called The Soul is Here for Its Own Joy. And this book of poetry is a collection of poetry from poets throughout the ages, and what they all have in common is that they are spiritual poems. This book is organized into chapters thematically, And today, there we go. Today we will be reading from the chapter on Rumi. Rumi was a Persian poet who lived in the 13th century, the 1200s. He was also an Islamic scholar and a very educated man. You may have heard of Rumi before. Although he lived nearly seven centuries ago, maybe closer to eight, math is not my forte, he is widely considered one of the best known and best selling poets in the Western world. Despite his poems being translations, they still resonate with modern audiences. They are shorter than I think we often think of ancient poems being, and they still get right to the point of things that matter most for us, spirituality, nature, living in simplicity, death. So you may or may not be familiar with Rumi and his work, but that is what we are reading from today. So let's get right into it. Our first poem today is called These Spiritual Window Shoppers. And if you're wondering if I always make a mess when I do this, the answer is yes. These spiritual window shoppers who idly ask, how much is that? Oh, I'm just looking. They handle a hundred items and put them down, shadows with no capital. What is spent is love and two eyes wet with weeping. But these walk into a shop and their whole lives pass suddenly in that moment in that shop. Where did you go? Nowhere. What did you have to eat? Nothing much. 
even if you don't know what you want by something, to be part of the exchanging flow. Start a huge, foolish project like Noah. It makes absolutely no difference what people think of you. I have two lines highlighted in this poem. Um, the first line is the fourth stanza. Even if you don't know what you want, buy something to be part of the exchanging flow. Join in the energy around you. You do not need to be precise. You do not need to be exact. You just need to join in. And then the last line. Um, this poem was written in the 1200s in Persian or another language and translated, but this idea still rings so true today. It makes absolutely no difference what people think of you. Our next poem is called, Who Says Words With My Mouth? All day I think about it, then at night I say it. Where did I come from and what am I supposed to be doing? I have no idea. My soul is from elsewhere, I'm sure of that. And I intend to end up there. This drunkenness began in some other tavern. When I get back around to that place, I'll be completely sober. Meanwhile, I'm like a bird from another continent sitting in this aviary. The day is coming when I fly off, but who is it now in my ear? Who hears my voice? Who says words with my mouth? Who looks out my eyes? What is the soul? I cannot stop asking if I could taste even one sip of an answer, I could break out of this prison for drunks. I didn't come here of my own accord and I can't leave that way. Let whoever brought me here take me back. This poetry. I never know what I'm going to say, I don't plan it. When I'm outside the saying of it, I get very quiet and rarely speak. Ice coffee and a joint is a killer combination. What I like about this poem is the way Rumi examines the nature of consciousness and how he compares this lifetime, this version of consciousness to being drunk, to being drunk in a tavern. You didn't start out in this tavern, but you can't leave this tavern yet. It reminds me of some classes in the Waking Up course with Sam Harris. If or Sam Hill, I think it's Sam Harris. If any of you have ever done that before, Sam presents some very existential quandaries during his meditations that are remarkably similar to the questions that Rumi presents in this poem about the nature of consciousness. Who is the observer? Who is sitting behind your eyes? What do you see when you look inward? interesting to see how some concepts transcend time barriers and still we grapple with them today. Our next poem is called Someone Digging in the Ground. An eye is meant to see things. The soul is here for its own joy. A head has one use for loving a true love legs to run after. Love is for vanishing into the sky, the mind for learning what men have done and tried to do. Mysteries are not meant to be solved, the eye goes blind when it only wants to see why. A lover is always accused of something, but when he finds his love, whatever was lost in the looking comes back, completely changed. On the way to Mecca, many dangers, thieves, the blowing sand, only camel's milk to drink. Still, each pilgrim kisses the black stone there with pure longing, feeling in the surface the taste of the lips he wants. This talk is like stamping new coins. They pile up while the real work is done outside by someone digging in the ground. have two passages highlighted in this poem. The first is basically the entire first stanza. 
The soul is here for its own joy, which is where the book gets its name. A head has one use for loving a true love, legs to run after. And then the second line in the second stanza complements the first line of the poem very well. The second line says, Mysteries are not to be solved. The eye goes blind when it only wants to see why. When it only wants to see one thing, the eye goes blind. The first line of the poem says, An eye is meant to see things, plural, a multitude, to take it all in. I'll put this down for our next poem. It's called Praising Manners. We should ask God to help us toward manners. Inner gifts do not find their way to creatures without just respect. If a man or woman flails about, he not only smashes his house, he burns the world down. Your depression is connected to your insolence and your refusal to praise. If a man or woman is on the path and refuses to praise, that man or woman steals from others every day, is in fact a shoplifter. The sun became full of light when it got hold of itself. Angels began shining when they achieved discipline. The sun goes out whenever the cloud of not praising comes near. The moment that foolish angel felt insolent, he heard the door close. I like this poem, um, firstly, because it's beautifully written. And secondly, because I think it, connect, it touches on an important piece of whether you want to call it religion or faith or a belief in something higher. That it takes work to believe in such a way that you achieve peace. It takes work to stay connected. And what he's referring to as manners here is really kind of devotion to whatever it is that you believe in. Our final poem today is called, That Journeys Are Good. If a fir tree had a foot, or two, like a turtle, or a wing, do you think it would just wait for the saw to enter? You know the sun journeys all night under the earth. If it didn't, how could it throw up its flood of light in the east? And salt water climbs with such marvelous swiftness to the sky. If it didn't, how would cabbages be fed with rain? Have you thought of Joseph lately? Didn't he leave his father in tears going? Didn't he then learn how to understand dreams and give away grains? And you, if you can't leave your country, you could go into yourself and become a ruby mine open to the gifts of the sun. You could travel from your manhood into the inner man or from your womanhood into the inner woman. By a journey of that sort, earth becomes a place where you find gold. So leave your complaints and self-pity and internalized death energy. Don't you realize how many fruits have already escaped out of sourness into sweetness? A good source of sweetness is a teacher. Mine is named Shams. You know every fruit grows more handsome in the light of the sun. I thought I was going to catch it before it went out, but I didn't. I like this poem. Let's let that close. I like this poem for a couple reasons because Rumi is talking, yes, about physical journeys. Yes, about journeys that require strength and, and physicality to get through. But he specifically says in this poem, in the, in the line that I have highlighted here, and you, if you can't leave your country, you could go into yourself and become a ruby mine open to the gifts of the sun. You don't have to go anywhere to have a meaningful journey. 
to step into yourself, to look inside and become a better person, to escape out of sourness into sweetness. This poem touches on physical journeys, actual journeys, metaphorical journeys, and internal journeys. And it mentions both men and women, which I always appreciate in a poem, particularly an older one, because they tend to only mention men. But he describes a journey into yourself as the sort that Earth becomes a place where you find gold. Those are all the poems that I have for you today. Rumi has, of course, many more poems in his vast collection, and I highly recommend exploring them. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any poems that you would like to hear, or any poets that you would like to hear from, please let me know. I am always looking to broaden my poetry horizons. That's it for me today. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and have a wonderful day.